I'm on my way to mow a private garden meadow on behalf of a, of a private customer. So come on and see how it goes. So here is Elsa's garden and she have about uh, 300 square meters of uh, meadow here saved for the wildflowers and she want to use the cutted grass for nutrition and uh, cover on her vegetables here. So what I need for a mission like this is uh, my snath. I need a scythe blade. And today I choose a 75 centimeters hook nosed blade that uh, grabs a little bit more grass when it's uh, even areas like this. Uh, water for me and for the honing stones. I need a belt. And I need my honing stones. And dom hemma. Snaf, water, a good blade, a belt, my honing stones, an allen key, yeah, that's all. So I tight this really firm to fix the tang towards the snaf, so the hafting angle won't slide up if I hit something. And now I have the hafting angle set so that the tip of the blade is close to 10 centimeters uh, inside of the inner side of the blade. <sighs> so let's see how long this mission takes. The clock is now 10 minutes past nine. I have a few clients who hire me every year to mow parts of their property that they keep as meadow. I have been mowing this particular area for Else for about seven years now, and it's really nice. I love being out on the big meadows with my scything team, but this is another type of challenge and variety is always good. There is also a lot of variety within the garden itself. There are trees, bushes, stones, walls, and a fenced-in vegetable garden, which will be a bit of a challenge. In this video, you will mostly see me working, and by the end, we'll see how long it took to mow the whole area. And of course, I will give you some tips and tricks along the way. So sit back, relax, and let's scythe this garden for Elsa. Yeah, so that was the primary row, and I like to work from up to down. That's always much easier, or maybe like along the slope in this direction, depending a little bit how the grass is leaning. And as I'm right-handed, it makes sense to start in this corner of the me meadow, uh, as I always want to mow grass onto an area where it's already cutted.
Here I try to mow around some of the nice meadow plants like this one for example, åkerved and uh, like gulmåra, blåklocka and so. Here is some of the gulmåra which I will save. And this area is really dry and scattered grass, so I need to have a sharp scythe and press it down to have a firm ground pressure to cut it nicely. And when I'm pressing it down, it's also more available for soil particles that uh, dull the cutting edge. So I need to hone often. And a fence like this is super dangerous. So be aware not coming to catch the steel like this, but try to come with the back of your scythe like this. Easier said than done. You need to learn by doing mistakes. But when I draw, drawing up the first line here, I will go forward and then like turn left towards the fence several times. This is quite a tricky area actually with a, a 75 centimeters long blade and a long snap. We'll see how it goes. So here I will open up a new area you see and uh, I do it with like circle around myself getting a pile in the middle and using very much of this hub rotation. This is hard without removing that fence. And into the ant pile. That means directly honing again. Mugna sorts of spare day, right? Just as.
So this area here is much more challenging as this is drier and more ant piles and scattered grass. And inside here under the trees it's greener and lusher and much easier to mow. And now when you hear the scratches, when I'm touching the wall and the stones, it's only this part of the blade that touches. If you have low hanging branches like this, you can use the scythe to cut them off, as long as they are not too thick. Just make sure that you use a cutting motion with the blade, like I'm doing here. Don't hit the branch straight on, it won't work and you might damage the blade. So I noticed that the deer has been a lot in this garden uh, during the summer, so a lot of grass is actually tramped down and they have laid and rest here, so it makes it a little bit more challenging to cut properly. It's really so easy to reach under the bush with a scythe blade like this. And here we can save some of the pressed krager. I usually save some wildflowers here and there. It's nice for Elsa and her neighbors to look at, 
and it benefits the bees and other insects as well. Helping the insects also helps other species that eat them, like birds, hedgehogs and so on. It helps biodiversity, to put it simply. And now we are finally on to the last row. There is a fence that runs along this row as well. So I need to be careful not to get the blade caught in that. It's easy to start rushing toward the finish line here. But I want to be thorough all the way. Almost there now, just this last corner left. Okay, finished. And now the time is 10 past 10, which means that we have been working for one hour. So if calculating that we have cut the 300 square meters in one hour and duplicate that into eight hours, that means 2,400 square meters in one working day. You might say that impossible, but no, it's not. You just need to surf of the super sharpness and have a good technique and a good sight. And uh, not only that the scythe is really fast doing this type of jobs, the grass is really easy to collect for Elsa now to bring on her garden. And we have been working for one hour in the late evening and the neighbors have not been disturbed.